Welcome to this quick guide on using sheet metal tools in Autodesk Inventor. In this video, we'll cover essential techniques for creating and modifying sheet metal parts. Whether you're a beginner or looking to refine your skills, you'll learn how to efficiently design with sheet metal in Inventor. Let's get started and explore these powerful tools together. In this introductory video for the sheet metal environment in Autodesk Inventor, we're going to look at several fundamental elements. We'll begin by defining the sheet metal rule. Then we'll go through creation of a face. We'll create it a fold. We'll create a couple of flanges. We'll put some uh, corner rounds and chamfers in place. We'll place some holes and then we'll finish by creating a flat pattern. We're going to use uh, some of the Simpson strong tie elements because they're attractive and they're easily available at your local hardware store so that you can get one and look at it for yourself. The element that I have here on the screen is a fence board hanger. It's FBZ2 uh, or FB24Z. It's a 2x4 hanger that you can nail to a 2 by or a 4x4 stud and then you can make it easy to, to build your fence with. Um, it's a 20 gauge piece and it's got several elements with it. If I look at the Simpson Strong Tie catalog, the one that we're looking at is this one right here. So it's the FB24Z. Okay. If we look over here in uh, the information, we can see that it is a 20 gauge material and that it's got, you know, a height, width, and depth that are all defined in here. We can go down and look at that information in here. Um, and I'm going to walk you through the entire process of creating this element um, in Autodesk Inventor. If I go to Autodesk Inventor, this is what the finished product is going to look like. And it's going to, uh, we'll walk through again, creating the face, the fold, the different flanges, placing holes, and then finally ending up with the <clears throat> flat pattern. So to begin with, the first thing that you will want to do is to define your sheet metal rule. To do so, you'll go to the sheet metal defaults tool and you're going to want to click on the pencil button to edit the sheet metal rule. Since we want to create a new one, I'll click right here on new and I'll give it a name and this is going to be 20 gauge galvanized because it's 20 gauge galvanized steel that this is made out of. I'll go ahead and set that current by double clicking on it. And then I'm going to change the material from generic to steel galvanized. And my thickness for 20 gauge is 0 0.0396. For the default K factor, we'll leave that as, or for the K factor, which is a bending rule, we'll leave that as the default. However, on the bends, I'm going to change it from straight to tear. And on corners, I'm going to change it from trim to bend to tear as well. Once I'm done there, I can choose save and close and make sure that it's set up here. My, my, notice that it changed my thickness a little bit there. That's fine. A few thousandths of an inch won't make a difference. And I can say cancel. So it's ready to go. In order to save time, I've already created the sketch, which is here. And this is just a normal sketch like you would do in uh, regular Autodesk Inventor. It's fully constrained, it's fully dimensioned and, and ready to go. And what I did was I went to one of these parts that I actually have on hand and I made a bunch of measurements so that I could get it as close to the actual size as necessary. And so I went ahead and created that sketch. Notice that down here on the bottom, I do have the fold and, and I put this in so that I could show you how to use a fold mechanism. This bottom part down here is going to become this leg right here that is folded and put in place. Okay, so coming back to Inventor, now that I have my sheet metal rule in place and I have my defined pro or my profile defined, I can go to the face tool, which is basically the same as the extrude tool but because we're working with sheet metal it doesn't allow me to change the thickness at all it's just going to give me the one thickness and I can pick my two profiles there's two profiles because of the uh, the, the line in the bottom down here where my fold is going to be 
divot you know, breaks that up. And I'm going to change the direction from towards me to away from me and then choose OK. So now that I've done that, you can see that it creates my sheet metal fold or my sheet metal part. Um, it did not fold this yet, but uh, that's the next thing we're going to do. So one of the ways that you can create uh, a sheet metal part with folds is to draw it in, place the break line where you want it to be. I did with a center line in this case. And then you can use the fold tool, which is up here on your create tab. In order to see where that line is, I'm going to come to my history, expand face one, right click on sketch one, and then choose visibility so I can see that original sketch again. And again, I can see that line there that's gonna become my fold. To use it now, all I have to do is click fold, and then I can click that line, and it's going to give me a couple of options. <clears throat> If I do it this way, it's gonna take this upper part and fold it down, which is not what I want. So I'm just gonna turn it around and make this bottom part and fold it out like this. And then I have a few different locations. I, do I want the center line of the fold? Do I want the start of the bend? Or do I want the end of the bend? If I click here, you'll see that it just changes slightly where we want it to go. And for the purposes of this one, I'm going to choose the end of the bend there. So I'll choose OK. You can see now that it folds that portion out. It does leave the sketch in place, which is fine, because now what I can do is come back in here, right click on sketch one, and turn the visibility of that sketch off. So we've created our first fold. The next thing I want to do is come in here and create a couple of flanges, one on each side, so that we get the two sides that we need. To do so, I can click flange right here, and it's going to allow me to pick my sides. So I'll say I want to pick this one here. You'll see that it simulates it. I also want to pick this one over here. Then I can come in and I can change the distance that I want it to be. I want that to be three quarters of an inch based on my measurements. And then there's a couple important things to look at. I've got my bend position here. So its default is to the inside of the reference plane. But the way that I set this up is the original plate that I created there was the width that I want it to be. So I need to change this over here to the outside of the reference plane. See how it makes it a little bit wider. And then I'm also going to change this down here so that the length of, this, of these flanges, it's gonna be three quarters of an inch from this inside. Okay, so that from the inside here, from the tangent plane, so I'll click there. And then when I choose OK, you'll see that it creates my two flanges. If I wanted to measure this just to make sure that it was correct, I could come into Inspect. I could pick Measure and say from the inside surface there to the inside surface there, it's 1 and 9 16 which is correct. And if I wanted to make sure that my height was correct, I could say from the top of that surface there to the top there, you can see now that that's three and three eighths, which is also correct. Now that we have that in place, we're actually getting very close to being done. <clears throat> if I want to put some corner rounds in on these corners, because they're not square, they're round. Again, if I go back to the original picture, you'll see here that they're round. I can do that. So I'll come in and I'll say, I want to place in here <clears throat> some corner rounds. I'm going to change the radius on those to 0 0.06. It's about a sixteenth of an inch. And I'm going to select all of the places where I want those corner rounds to be. And you can pick them all at once regardless of the orientation. So I can pick these two as well. And then choose OK. And you'll see that it places all of my corner rounds in. I can also come in and place in my chamfers. I need four chamfers. A quarter of an inch is actually good for what I'm doing here. So I will pick my four corners that I need the chamfers on. One, two, three, four, and then choose OK, and it puts those four in there. From here, I'll go ahead and I'll put in some of my holes. And if I go back to that original, I don't have the holes in the original sketch, but I can come in and I can simply place holes <clears throat> on that surface. So I'll right click, say I want a new sketch on this surface. And I'm going to just use 
Um, I'm going to draw a construction line with a line just to make it a little bit easier to make sure that my holes are all lined up right on the center. The good thing about using the construction line is it's not going to be a part of any profile and because I drew that line vertically I can place my points on it and I don't have to worry about constraining them all vertical to that original plane. So I'm just going to come in and put four points on that line and then I can simply dimension those. So from again that base point there, this first one is at 5 8 and then the next one is at a quarter of an inch more. And then this one here is at one and five eighths. Oops, I'm sorry. Two and a, two and an eighth. And this one is at a quarter of an inch more. So I've got four places for holes there. I can finish this sketch. And now in order to put those holes in place, I can use the hole tool. If we go back to our plane here, it says that for, the, uh, for this element here, it's using 0.131 by one and a half inch nails, <clears throat> which are eight penny nails. Eight penny nails have a uh, diameter of a little about 131. Of course, the hole needs to be a little bit bigger than that in order to get the hole through or the nail through without damaging the hanger. So I'm going to place those in with five thirty seconds holes. So that'll be a five thirty second hole. That'll be a five thirty second hole. And then there's a couple of holes here that could be a little bit bigger. If we look at the original, see there's two smaller holes and then two larger holes. So I'll go ahead and place those in as well um, at, at a second round. So I'll say hole. <clears throat> On my hole feature here, <clears throat> I'm just going to use a plain hole with no seat. And I want that diameter there to be 5 30 seconds, which is 0.15625 um, is my diameter. And I don't want these upper holes, so I'm going to hold my shift down. I'm going to deselect those two. So I'm just getting the lower holes that will be the right size. I'll say OK. It puts the two lower holes in. Now I want to go back in and put the two upper holes back in, so I will make that sketch visible. And then I'll just use the hole tool again, and I'll change the diameter on this one to 3 16 So it's just a little bit bigger. OK. Now that I've got those four holes in, I can turn the visibility of this sketch off and I can put in any other holes that I need. So I'll put another hole in on each of these flanges. If we look here, if there's a hole on that side and there's a hole on that side, so we'll put those in. Coming back to Inventor here, I'm going to say I need a hole and this time I won't use a sketch just to show how you can place holes on the fly. So I need a hole on that surface right there. It's going to be uh, one inch from the top and a quarter of an inch from that front surface. And again, my diameter here is going to be for the smaller holes, 0.15625. And I don't want to go through all. Notice that it wants to put it all the way through all, but I want it to only go to that next surface right there. So I'll pick that surface say OK. So that's the first one. Now on the other side we'll do the same thing. So let me turn it around here. I'll say I want a hole on that side. There. I'm going to make it an inch from the bottom and a quarter of an inch from the front. OK. And notice that it's not giving me the OK here. I do need to kind of, sometimes you kind of have to make it think about it a little bit. So I'll click through all and then I'll say two and I'll pick that inside surface. Now it thinks about it, it's just fine. Everything's good to go. I can say, okay, that one's there. And then finally I have another hole in that surface. So I'll say, I, oh, I'm not gonna do it with a sketch. I'll just place the hole again, just like I did before. So I'll say, I want a hole on that surface right there. Um, 
on this one, I, sh I probably could make a sketch because I want it to be lined up with the midpoint of that. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll say I want a new sketch on that surface. The good thing about this is it projects that midpoint right there. So I can say when I put my point in, it's very simple now to make sure that those are aligned. I'll put a vertical constraint between the center point and that. And then I can just put my dimension in, 0.25. It's fully constrained, finish that sketch, and now I can put my hole in and be satisfied that I'm sure it's right where it's supposed to be. So there we go. Again, I'll have to kind of make it think about it a little bit here. Go to that surface, okay. So there's our completed part. Then simply to make your flat pattern, if everything's gone the way you can, or as, it, as supposed to, you can just come right over here to choose create flat pattern it completes your flat pattern makes everything out from here you can save this you can insert it into a 2d drawing you can add your dimensions and it's all ready to go